Salem Gasworks. We are the North Shore's Arts and Entertainment Network. And right. this is my husband, Dan. Hi, I'm Dan Morno, and welcome back to our uh, post Nemo uh, edition. We were supposed to be here a few weeks ago, but alas, we all got thrown off track there. And the gas in Gasworks stands for Guild of Artistic Sorts. And as we always say for the you folks who are flipping the dials, don't pass gas, stay a while. <laughs> Today, our artistic sorts are Aaron Brown and the EB3. They're core members of the Aaron Brown Band, and we're very excited to have them here. The Boston Globe once described uh, Aaron Brown as a sultry funk and soul from a singer who knows the intricacies of the heart. So we're very excited. Thanks so much for coming Thanks today. For coming. And we will also have uh, Denny Tentindo, painter-musician Denny Tentindo, uh, whose graphic art is now uh, in an installation at the Howling Wolf Cafe. And uh, now this is interesting. This relates to a piece of news we have. The city of Salem is now accepting proposals for its art box program. You've seen these uh, utility boxes around town that are uh, painted with some rich graphics. Denny actually uh, painted one of those and the selected artists receive $500 to uh, paint one of the downtown boxes and uh, applications are being accepted until April 8th and they'll be announced on June 1st. Uh, now, interestingly, the, I think these boxes are great. The one that draws the most comment is the one right across the studio. Uh, folks have commented that it looks like a Dr. Seuss illustration if Dr. Seuss uh, illustrated a book about colorectal perforations. <laughs> it shows what looked like bleeding colons. And it just occurred to me, boy, you know, it's been 50 years since uh, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas first aired, and we're about due for it. You're a, not going to do this. A sequel. Are you really going to do well, this? Well, apparently I am. Uh, <laughs> I thought, how would this go? Hmm. It would go something like this. He lunched on glass in pointy shards. He dined on barbed wire by the yard. He said, I do not really mind the awful bleeding from behind. <laughs> but when came time for number two, the Grinch, he cried, boo hoo hoo hoo. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen this utility box? Yeah, I love that yeah, one. I, I didn't know you did He you really did captures it, yeah. doesn't he? <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's marvelous. You it's it's it? marvelous. I think I have. Yeah. Yeah. In other news, Hannah Cranton, who's uh, very much a fixture uh, here in Salem, uh, she's a singer, she's a songwriter, and she's also an actress, uh, and she was also on our first show and our second, uh, has moved to New York to pursue her art there. And... Uh, she actually studied at Salem State, and you would have seen her playing at Gulu Gulu and the open mics. She played uh, as a solo artist, as a in a duet with Jeff Savlon. She did vocals with Black Dog Brother, and she played with Clay Ventry and the Bond Girls. Now, with her leaving, this leaves the Bond Girls without one female in the band. It's an all-male ensemble. Uh, so she's going to be back, though, for a CD release party on uh, 8 p.m. Sunday, March 10th at Gulu Gulu for her uh, CD Without a Shadow of a Certainty. And uh, the cover art, and we'll cut to a graphic here, uh, was actually shot by Mary Shea, who was also... Also in our first pilot episode. Photographer, mm -hmm. yeah. But enough falderal uh, and stuff and nonsense. Welcome, Erin. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. And welcome, welcome Steve. Steven. Thank you. Erin, uh, how did you arrive at two N's in your name? You're known as Aaron 2N Brown. Uh, yeah, the, well, the 2N comes from uh, all the marquees saying Aaron with 1N Brown, so I would say, mm -hmm. you know, and my name is spelled with 2N, so 2N became part of my name oh. when I'm with the, with the performances, but um, my sisters both have double consonants in their names, so mm -hmm. my mom added an N, Oh. Okay. so it wasn't me. What are your sisters' names? Kelly and Shannon. Oh, okay. Uh, Makes sense. Yeah. 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 That's when moms get to be creative, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Now, you began your solo recording career in, what year would you say? Was it 97? That's when you had your first album? Yeah, uh, 99 is when it, uh, when it was released. Um, and then I started playing out uh, on my own, with my own uh, band. <laughs> you know, yeah, okay. putting people together. And were you on the North Shore at that yeah. time? I was. You were? Mm -hmm. Okay. Erin yeah. actually uh, studied at the Berkeley School of Music, and that's where she met Steve, right? That's right. Berkeley College of Music. Right. Or yeah. Berkeley College of yeah. Music. Yeah. yeah. Did her senior recital. 
That's right. Really? Yeah. 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 That's brown that. blues. That's brown blues. Called. Really? <laughs> really? Do you um, now at the Berkeley College? Do you major in say woodwind or you know, what were your majors? Uh, well, you have a principal instrument, right. and mine was voice. Voice. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think about that. I kind of wish that I had maybe gone into you know, wind instrument or, yeah. or what piano, would it, maybe. What would it have been? Which um, wind instrument? I don't know. Um, maybe tenor. No. Tenor saxophone. Or clarinet. I don't know. Yeah, wow. but not, yeah. Just thinking back on it, I guess, yeah, the tenor. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, or piano, because um, that would have helped me out a lot more. Really? With the studying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With just voice. Yeah. I Everybody was, has to do piano, <laughs> though. Right. Which Especially is good. In some mm-hmm. yeah. But taking it a step further. And you took sure. piano? Well, I was a percussion major. Okay. You know, but everybody has to take piano. Yeah, which interesting. It's cool. So does everybody have to take voice? Did you? Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you have to might have to sing some uh, scales and solfege <laughs> syllables and stuff yeah. like that. But then I, you know, they don't expect you to be. Um, you know, an awesome singer or something. I have to say Unless something about watching you play the drums, though, because I've seen you play with a, a number of bands in the area. I always love to watch you play drums well, because thank you. I think of uh, Animal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, he's just, he's, he's oh one of the reasons God. I started playing, actually. So much fun to watch that you drum play. battle he did with uh, Buddy Rich. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you've been with the Aaron Brand Bound. Uh, Aaron, uh, I knew I was going to blow that at some point. <laughs> and Brown Band, it's up for some time, and uh, you haven't died yet. Uh, there's the, there's the oh, the Spinal Tap theory. Yeah, oh, the exploding oh, drummers. You might as well just <laughs> buy drummers and pack of twenty. <laughs> no, I'm still, uh, I'm still here. Okay. The bad penny. <laughs> Keep turning up. Practical question for you. The lucky penny. Yeah. The lucky penny. Well, practical Depends. question for you here, and I'll ask you both. Aaron will ask you first. Okay. You're 17 years old, 16, maybe 17 years old, and you're telling your parents, uh, Mom, Dad, I'm going to go study at the Berkeley College of Music. Their reaction was, which one of these? Or closest to which one of these? A, that's wonderful, dear. We love when you use your talents. B, can't you study law and play guitar and sing on the side? Or C, get out, get out. You've been a disappointment to us from the day you were born with cradle cap. That's awful. Well, <laughs> A, of course. Aaron Brown A. dodging the hard balls really? here on that. Uh, right out of the gate. Really? That's right, great. Yeah. That's really oh, great. Oh, that's wonderful. What? You How were, you? must have been a, you know, since a young girl, you must have been a musically mm-hmm. talented. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will. My family, my mom played in a trio, and um, they would practice at our house yeah. because we were too little to, you know, for her to be going out and doing stuff. So they came and they practiced and we learned the stuff and then we would you know, do the dishes together and sing three-part harmony. And oh, that kind nice. Of stuff. So that was that fun. fantastic. And then my, my middle sister learned how to play guitar and she sang the melody and then I sang the harmony. Uh, so we were doing um, talent shows together, uh, the two of us, and then my oldest sister would play flute sometimes and so that was fun. Wow. Um, uh, and then when she, when my middle sister uh, went to college, I, I was like, I want to be in the talent show. You know, I'm going to sing. And um, so I sang uh, Don't It Make My Brown Eyes Blue. Uh, Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, in the talent show. And people were surprised. And... Um, my mom said, oh, we're going to get you voice lessons for your birthday. So when I was 16, I started taking lessons from a conservatory close by. Oh. Wow. Um, and so that sh- this woman that I was taking lessons from really inspired me and got me a scholarship to study theory and stuff like that through the college. Yeah. And then uh, I entered this contest, and they sent me all these college catalogs, music uh, conservatories and all over the country, wow. and I got the Berkeley catalog, and 
I'm like, oh my God, I have oh, to go wow. here. Really? So uh, that was a dream of mine. I didn't go right away. Yeah, well, were you thinking of it? Or did you grow up with some other idea in mind of what you were going to do? I wanted to be, be a marine biologist. A marine biologist. That is, that's really weird because I wanted to too you when did? I was a <laughs> Yep, that's really weird. <laughs> but, uh, is that in, any part of your draw to Salem and being on, near the ocean? Wow, well, I always loved the ocean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, Steve, how about you? Uh, do we got that's wonderful deer? Can't you study law or get out? Get out. I had really supportive parents. Really? Yeah, okay. they were very, very into it. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have to be grateful because mm -hmm. me and my brother, we were in a band, you know, and when we were teenagers, it was a pretty loud um, affair, you know. <laughs> and my father gave us his whole garage and uh -huh. we set up stages in there. I mean, we were rock stars, you know what I mean? <laughs> wow. But uh, they were supportive the whole way through. And then, uh, I, uh, same, same situation, got the catalog for Berkeley and I, I wanted to go hmm. right away out of high school. I didn't, um, I didn't get in the first time. Really? Nope. And uh, I went to a different university, spent three years there, mm -hmm. which was great. Mm -hmm. And then I, uh, I re-auditioned for Berkeley and I got in, so. Fantastic. You know, that's great because a lot of, um, you know, artists, get insecure at times. I mean, it's part of just being an artist, being vulnerable. The fact that you took a, took a second shot at it is yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, sure. You know, it's, the fact is I know a couple of marine biologists and <laughs> I looked at your, <laughs> you know, list of gigs and you work more. <laughs> you know, there's, more, it's a, work, work more than, than a marine, marine biologist. biologist. It's a more secure <laughs> job. <right? laughs> so the idea that you'll starve to death because you're studying art, not nowadays. No, artists do fine, I think. Uh, Why don't you ask? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, the places don't, uh, a lot of them don't pay very well, uh, but some do. Some mm -hmm. pay enough. Some pay. And, um, sure. uh, and then Steve and I both teach privately mm -hmm. oh, yeah, sure. you know, um, lessons. So and people so want to connect with you about teaching, we could go to your website and talk to you there? Um, you have I have an email that people can email. Okay. okay. Either email yeah. or, or they can even connect with us here at Gasworks, and we'll make sure to connect you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. What about? I'm um, kind of booked right now, but yeah. Oh. Can, <laughs> That's <laughs> which good. Which is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, what uh, are the uh, elements of a good gig? You've you've you know a place that you'll return to again and again. What makes you want to go back? The people that work there. The people that work there. The people. If there's regulars yeah. in the venue. Um, you know, if you do the same songs a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, the people are into it, though, mm -hmm. you know, you might have played that song a, a bunch of times, but when somebody else is into it, that, that kind of makes you relive that mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. enthusiasm to play that, that song again, you know what I mean, I guess? Sure. So having good people in the room is, is very cool, mm -hmm. you know, and good, good staff, I guess, in a, in a joint. Well, I have to say, you do play at the, the Seaport um, Grill a lot, and you have your Sunday Fun Day there, which is a drop-in? Is it drop-in, or it's scheduled musicians, but do you have drop-in? Uh, occasionally, somebody will come up and, and play with yeah. us, but it's it's not an open mic okay. thing. Yeah. It's, um, you know, uh, plant guests. Well, you've been mm, instrumental yeah. at getting some really it's, great it's been acts a good run. consistently. Yeah. Yeah. And also, <laughs> Sarah uh, Ashodian, um, yep. you know, you just, between the two of you, brought some amazing music mm, here. It's, it's been Wonderful. Good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aaron, uh, inspirations for you. Like, uh, you told us about your teachers and such, but, uh, you know, I've heard your covers of uh, All on the Watchtower and Gimme One Reason, you know, any particular. Uh, uh, any particular inspiration? Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. always a hard question. I always want to study, you know, have an answer. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I was I was inspired by uh, Ann Wilson of Heart, mm -hmm. and um, that, that was a huge yeah. one for me. Um, I listened to uh, um, Bad Company was huge. Um, so the blues rock uh, kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, and then, I don't know, R&B. Uh, you know what I thought jazz. would be a great song for you to cover? Tell me something good. 
Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. I, I'm always afraid I'm going to mess up the rhythm on it. Really? Oh, that's <laughs> Shaka Khan um, and Rufus, right? Yeah, it is yeah, a great yeah, dance. Great. I would love to talk about two quick things because um, I, I, I want to, um, no. we to want to hear you sing. Yeah. But you're not originally from this area. You're from West Virginia. Yeah. What was that? It was um, Berkeley that brought you here? Yeah. 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 Okay. I, um, uh, I was born in New Jersey. We moved to West Virginia, and I was... And by the time I, you know, graduated there, I just needed to get out. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I'm going to Boston. And then I wound up getting a scholarship at this other college. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I took it because Berkeley was expensive. And I just decided that yeah. uh, when I was in the middle of that first year of college, I said, oh, well, I'm going to move up to Massachusetts to become a resident, get financial aid and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. In Salem? How did you end in Salem? Um, well, it's kind of a long story. Well, we don't have to go <laughs> into it, but how long have you been here for a while, though? Fourteen years. Yeah. Fourteen years. Okay, yeah. great. So you're going to play for us. Yes. Yep. And what are you, you going to do for us today? Uh, all originals. Um, we're going to do uh, Steve has... Lo the Love is a Piece of the okay. World. Um, Love is a Piece of the World? <laughs> yep. And yeah. this might not be in order. Okay. Because I'm going right. off of my Towards memory. Towards the Sun. Towards the Sun. And the sun. Uh, if I could hear it from you. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and these are all on your new CD? Two of them are, I guess. Right. And then um, I have uh, this, I have my bunch of CDs. So this CD is called? Ruled My Life. Ruled My Life. And this is your first CD. Uh, this was released in 2011. Is there another one in the works? Uh, well, uh, Steve and I have been writing songs together, and Allison, our bass player, mm -hmm. Allison Kesslow, um, uh, we have couple songs we've been working on and uh, I've been writing kind of not gigging as much and really mm -hmm. just kind of oh, trying to be more creative and um, so that's uh, coming but probably maybe 2014 or okay. something like that okay. um, but this album was uh, going backwards this was in 2008 and um, and this one's called this is called don't forget about it don't and forget about this it. was my first uh, where this was my baby it was my you okay. know, I um, got the musicians. There's a lot of studio musicians. On and where can people find your work? Um, I uh, come to the gigs. Come, come to the yeah. gigs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you have a CD website. Baby. And CD right. Baby. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah. You can go to AaronBrown.com. AaronBrown.com. Okay. And, uh, two ends. Aaron Brown. Mm -hmm. two and ends. then there are links. And actually, that website um, is long overdue for an overhaul, and okay. so we're in the process of discussing. Okay. It. So the I'm not. Uh, What's the name of that song? Uh, if I could hear from if you. If I could hear from you, is on this album. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. Right. So. Well, uh, without further ado, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear the Aaron Brown. No, the EB3. The EB3. I agree.
Thank you. And that was the EB3 with Aaron Brown on uh, vocals and guitar, Steve Peabody on congas, and Randy Leventhal on lead guitar. I understand you also have another member in your band. Allison Kessler. Allison she plays bass. Yeah. yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration for the songs that you did for us today? Uh, well, the first song, uh, Love is a Piece of the World, um, was uh, uh, just kind of, I was going through a transition. Um, and it was just uh, wanting things to be better, which actually I just wrote a song that actually has that in the chorus. But um, so I, I guess that's uh, the, the most I can say about it. Um, uh, my album, uh, Don't Forget About It, actually is uh, comes from that from that song. Mm -hmm. So because um, uh, the title track of that album, mm -hmm. uh, like 2008. Uh, but we also do it uh, with the Aaron Brown Band, mm -hmm. um, with Allison Kesslow and Steve Peabody and Jay Apt mm -hmm. on guitar and Fran McConville on guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do we hear? So uh, then the second song um, was Towards the Sun, mm -hmm. and uh, that song was uh, on my first album. <laughs> I have my albums right here. <laughs> um, and that's... Uh, this and was on in this 99. One. This is Road Signs to the Sun. Mm -hmm. And so... The thing about the Aaron Brown Band um, version of that Towards the Sun is that um, it was first recorded, you know, it's different uh, than, uh, than now with the band. It, over the years, performing, it's become a different song. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, Richer and fuller and, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, anyway, Towards the Sun was originally uh, written and inspired by a dried flower arrangement that I had in my, in my room when I was going to college uh, and a breakup. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the third one, uh, if I could hear from you, was just, um, it's, it's another relationship song. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. old relationship. Okay. Well, thank you. We, have, we also have uh, Denny Tintendo here with us today, who Very is good. a painter. Mm -hmm. Did I get it right? You got it right. <laughs> <laughs> who is a painter, and you know, the idea of, of channeling uh, you know, things that are happening to us into our art, and I'm always interested in what inspires people. Um, but before we go down that route, I'd uh, like to talk to you about some of the music changes. Mm -hmm. We're here to talk to you about your painting. But just in uh, discussing with you today, when you arrived, you've seen a lot of changes in the music scene. Yeah, I've been here, here for about 15 years. Um, it's maybe the first time I played Salem was like 95, something mm -hmm. like that. And it was, it was a great place for music. There was a lot of clubs. Um, there was what was your band then? My band then was Chocolate Milk. Okay. Uh, and that was music that I that I wrote uh, original stuff, and uh, I've been playing in a Beatles cover band around town, which is very fun. Uh, called Me, Mr. Mustard. Me, Mr. Mustard. Mean Mr. Mustard. Mean like Mr. Mustard. 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 Okay. On Road. Mustard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the next mm -hmm. word. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and now I'm playing bass in a punk band. And mm -hmm. We're gonna take over the world. Punk. <laughs> yeah, as punk bands always threaten to do. Yeah. Uh, Ivy League. Ivy League. Ivy. Matt, look up for us. Ivy League. Dot com. I've heard it referred to as folk punk. Yeah, yeah, or old school pride punk rock swing. <laughs> old school pride punk rock swing. Yeah. That's a mouthful. Yeah. But we're here to talk about your paintings, which is how I was introduced to you. I first saw your work at Front Street Cafe. Mm -hmm. oh. And um, I'm always amazed when I go somewhere around town and I see your work and I realize, that's another Denny. Oh my goodness, that's another Denny because the work is just so different. It, I've their been styles of that <laughs> are amazing. So um, I'd like to start with um, a triptych that is up at Howling Wolf right now, mm -hmm. and it's uh, Venice, Amsterdam, and Florence. Florence yep. Tell us about that. Um, the, the first piece I did on that was the Florence piece, and um, I sort of get obsessed with things sometimes. So I was obsessed with stone walls and brick walls, and um, you know, so I look at pictures, and uh, obviously Italy and Amsterdam, they're very all stonework, so I got into paint and stone, and uh, those came out of that. Mm -hmm. um, and I have more in that series, um, and more to come. Mm -hmm. sure. What's uh, interesting is there are familiar environments that we're used to seeing from, you know, tourist photographs. Right. But it's, it's black and white and very stark, mm -hmm. which, of course, you can see in a photograph, but it's, it's, it seems to just capture this uh, vibrancy and the textural. I love the texture. Yeah, yeah the and texture. I, I think that's what, what draws me to doing brick. Yeah. Um, I do it a lot. Yeah. I do it a lot, yeah. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. you've got your horse series. Yep. So tell us about that. Are you from an area where horses, are, what is your interest in no, horses? No, I'm from Revere. Uh, we, from we, Revere? we didn't have horses in Revere. <laughs> really? More trees. Revere. Yeah, wow. I'm from Revere. Mm. Um, but I was, I was hired by somebody to do, uh, a lot of the work I do is commission. So I was hired by somebody that owned horses to mm. uh, paint one of his horses for his wife for her birthday. And, um, and he was a repeat client, kept coming back to me on Christmas, her birthday. And, uh, I did a bunch for him, and um, and was it always the same horse? Different horses. Different horses. Different horses. Um, so I got into that. Um, they're fun to paint, you know. Yeah. It's a very beautiful. They're incredibly yeah, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful animals. animals. So you get again into the texture. There is one piece that you have that's on. It looks like a door or a table. The horse is. A, it's an old fence. I, um, it's an old fence. Yeah, it, I connected to construction, so. I get all these old doors, I get old pieces of fence and mm -hmm. old wood and uh, it, it, it's just really fun to paint on, you know, great look in the end. And, uh, people do you always know what you're going to do ahead of time when you get a piece of uh, uh, fencing or a door? The or design doesn't come from the, from the piece of, that I'm painting on itself, but when you're painting on something like that, it definitely tends to lend to what you're doing, you know, mm -hmm. so the piece will develop on the, on whatever it is I'm painting yeah. on. You know, it's very different from painting on canvas. Yeah. There's a lot of texture, so as you start painting, you start seeing things and you start going with, yeah. with it, you know, and uh, yeah, I love doing it. It's, now, what it's is fun. your medium that you use most often? M mostly oil. Mostly yeah, oil. Yeah, I, I mostly use oil. Um, mm -hmm. Do a lot of murals, and those are generally acrylic, faster drying, yeah. you know, kind of. I, I, I do want to talk about the, the first piece of your work that I have seen is the one with the fox in it. I understand it's... It's um, from Ipswich. It's an old shed door, and I painted um, 
from the Autobahn up in Ipswich, uh, the bird sanctuary. Oh, when you okay. first drive in, there's there's a little house. So on one of my trips there, which I do go often, uh, walking out, is beautiful sunset, mm -hmm. beautiful house in the snow, and fox just kind of ran right across the... So the it really eye. happened. So, oh, no, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it just... You know, things like that will kind of stick with me, and then I went home and painted it. You know. I, it's my favorite of your Thank work. You. I Thank love you. that Sarah said it kind of reminds her of uh, Wyeth's Christine's World and Christina's Christine's World. Is that? Uh, there's some you know that no. you'd know it if you saw it. Yeah, I'll have to send you a copy of that a uh, link because there's you'll understand why. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know Christina's World? Mm -hmm. As a woman, um, I didn't know, but she's kind of lying in the grass and she's looking up at a house, you know, mm -hmm. that looks abandoned. Right, right. Off and um, and this vast expanse between her and the house, mm -hmm. but she's in an odd angle, and then you find out afterwards apparently this girl had MS or something. But oh, okay. mm -hmm. but the fox and there's something mm -hmm. about the structure and the layout of it. Um, um, but I also want to talk about the other, um, I mean, you, you are used to painting, painting on all kinds of interesting things. Um, mm -hmm. You've painted on mirrors. Yep. Yeah, I did a, I did a mural on uh, three mirrors uh, for a store in Danvers, um, and that was fun. Again, I used oils on that. Um, definitely strange painting on glass, for sure. Yeah. Um, that was fun. Yeah. How do you paint on glass? I mean, you have to gesso a canvas. You use a brush. Hey, well, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're kidding. Yeah, uh, no, I mean, kind of no, I, no well, what I did was um, I laid it out with, with a magic marker to get, uh, mm -hmm. you know, all my edges, and then I filled it in with a, with a glossy surface primer. Oh, okay. Um, how terrible, you know. Okay, so it, there was no be. need to make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> But it's so I was easy. just explaining the process. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Um, okay. So, uh, talking about murals, you did the mural at jo Dodge Street Grill. I did the mural at Dodge Street Grill, which is sadly gone now, which was a great music venue. I've seen Aaron play there. I used to play there. Um, now, what? So, what are some of the images? Because some parts of it remind me of Guernica. It's kind of a jazz band thing. Uh, I had originally done just the guitar player. Uh, mm -hmm. Picasso has a painting a uh, guitar player in blue. Mm -hmm. It's an old man with a guitar. And uh, I like the theme, so I did one. And when Dodge Street opened, or when uh, the owner, uh, who Frank, who owned it at the time, when he bought the place, we decided to make the back room a nice big music venue for rock bands, mm -hmm. and uh, decided to put a mural up there. So I expanded on that idea and added the drummer and the bass player, and the piano player, and the sax mm -hmm. player. Yeah. And there's a couple oh. of other uh, murals of yours out there, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, the Witch Doctor uh, on Lafayette Street, I have a mural, which is all brick. Um, mm -hmm. And it's kind of based on the paintings we were just talking about of Italy. Okay. Um, and then on Route 1, I have a mural of Las Vegas. Okay. Where um, is that exactly? That's uh, in the adult video warehouse. I don't know. <laughs> 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 wow, really? Yeah, I well, wonder. it's actually on the adult video warehouse. Um, uh -huh. The owner, it was another commission job. He, um, he was having trouble with his store, given you know what it is as far as putting something in the front window. He was very limited to what he could advertise in his front window. But he had <laughs> maybe 25 feet of blank space, and he wanted to you know, bring some attention to his store, so... Creative solution. So he yeah. liked Las Vegas, so I did a 20 by, 20 foot by 8 foot mural of Las Vegas. Now, did you come up with fun. the theme, or did he...? Um, well, he wanted Las Vegas, mm -hmm. um, so what I did is I took a lot of the, uh, the elements that you'd recognize of Las Vegas, the, um, the Luxor and the, yeah. the, the Paris and all the, the big... Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, you do. Hotels. You do anything. You can do Thanks anything. You. I do a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that is the, uh, so uh, he also does yeah. portraits, and mm -hmm. those are very interesting to me mm -hmm. because they're not as textural as some of your other work. There's a softness to them, and they kind of fade between a black and white, and and then yeah, the and skin the more and realism the then. Yeah. Well, some paintings I do, like like the fox, you know, was a moment that got caught in my head, and you know, I had to paint it. Um, the buildings from Amsterdam uh, and Venice and Florence, those are just, you know, kind of a study in doing that style. Mm -hmm. Realism for me is sort of where I began. I started with portraits as a kid. Uh, mm -hmm. I lived, uh, grew up in Riviera and lived across the street from a man named Norman Guttrow, mm -hmm. who was a very successful painter in the 50s and 60s, did a lot of paintings of Riviera, Riviera Beach, Carnival, mm -hmm. you know, sure. he's a famous one of the Cyclone. Uh, 
that he did. So as a little kid, I used to hang out with his grandson and we'd hang out in his studio. Mm -hmm. So art was realism to me initially. Yeah. Um, so I learned how to draw like that yeah. first. But it's but it also fi it, it also kind of uh, morphs into uh, something far more artistic than just a straight portrait. Yeah, I try yeah. to add something to it. You yeah. know, I get bored. So know? I'm a new mom, and I've got. I mean, I've seen this. There's a you know, you do children, you do yes. babies, you yeah. do. So how do I get in touch with you? If you I'm can go to my website, DannyTintendo.com. Mm -hmm. uh, my phone number's there. My email's there. Um, or you can just come to Salem. You'll know, find me. Yeah. Sure. Tell us a little about your journey. Uh, we asked Erin how she became a musician. How did you become a painter? I mean, you've told us a little bit. Did you go on and, to study it? or? Um, I, I went to a Vogue school for commercial art, um, <laughs> which wasn't really my interest. Um, but it gave me a lot of time to sit and just work on things. You sure. know, um, When you're in a Vogue school, you have a whole week of your shop class. Mm -hmm. So we'd get projects that were more graphic arts, mm -hmm. logo design, stuff like that. And I'd bang those out real quick. And, uh, and w did, it put, it, did it give you a little bit? Because I know it's always hard for artists to also put on that business head. Right. Did, <laughs> did having that experience help <laughs> you think more? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think looking back, it did. At the time, it was, I mean, it was. It always came pretty easy to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when everyone was telling me to do my homework, I was just doodling on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So I, mm -hmm. you know, as, as a result of that, didn't do well in school. But I learned how to draw. Mm -hmm. sure. um, but absolutely, uh, because you were forced to do what they asked you to do. And a lot of a lot of what I do as an artist now, what you've what we've talked about, and you've seen is stuff I've done for me. But uh, I do a lot of commission work, mm -hmm. so it does force me to. Um, to change my style yeah. and be adaptable to what yeah, people's needs absolutely. are. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And given that I have a realism background and a creative side, I'm able to work with people pretty well on that. Yeah. So um, you've done uh, shops and other various shops in the area. All kinds of shops. Um, I work. I've worked on movie sets. I was in the Scenic Artists Union for a couple of years. And I worked when uh, when Hollywood first started doing a yeah. lot of movies here. I was doing a lot of movie sets. Did you yeah. work with Bob Moody? No. No. Okay. I no. Just, no. I, I know him, but I yeah, okay. but I yeah. Ha, I've never worked with him. We've talked about it though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because I went to Brandeis, and he was the senior oh, okay. designer there, the head of the program. Right. Um, so uh, you're you're also your work is a lot. Um, it, it's seen a lot at the uh, Witch Doctor, which yeah, is Witch up Doctor. in. If people don't know um, where the Witch Doctor is, it's up in. The Lafayette, Lower Lafayette yeah. section of town. One hundred nine Lafayette Street. Um, right next to Wendy's. Mm -hmm. um, and they're a glass blowing studio primarily. Uh, they have a live glass blower and then you can come watch and uh, watch him blow glasses, which is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. I'd love to get into that. Um, but I have, a, I have a wall there that I always rotate my artwork on and that's sort of a permanent thing. And uh, we're doing April, I'm having an installation there, which will be based on bees mostly, mm -hmm. um, which is something I've been painting for a while now. The bees are disappearing, you know. Right. Yeah. So, is that what your attraction is? Yeah, that's the, sort of what got me doing it. Um, we started the show just to make a, a connection here. We started the show talking about the art boxes right. in uh, Salem, right. the utility boxes, and you did one of them last year, and it was bees. Yes, it was bees. Yeah. Um, part of that part of that series. I was kind of working on it at the time, and that's why I submitted uh, one of those drawings. But I just heard people talking about bees. So it was like a whole week. Every time I turned around, someone was talking about the disappearing bees. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, d I got into painting, painting and drawing them, and uh, I've been kind of going with it. People like them, I paint them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fantastic. Before yeah. we wrap, uh, weren't you telling us some wonderful story earlier about a horse's skull? Oh, yes. <laughs> that fun picture that... The <laughs> horse skulls. Yes. Yeah, I have three of them, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Two of them up at, at the uh, Howling Wolf right now. Uh -huh. um, uh, there was... Uh, a show called Open Skull Opens, which is, it happens every year in Salem. Um, Mike Lash puts it on. Last year was at the Witch Doctor. I think they're going to do it in October at uh, Front Street mm -hmm. Coffee Shop. Um, and it's just all skull-related art, so I kind of just... Human and animal. Yeah, I, I do skulls, mm -hmm. uh, or I do horses, so I thought, why not do a horse now, what skull about, for What happened it? to the, what was the funeral that you were telling us about? The artist, <laughs> you know, tell us about that. That was, a, that was an art opening that I did um, last year in June. Um, to, to make it fun, we decided to do it, the death of the painter, and it was really designed to um, push my prices up 
because uh, you know oh, of course, dead right? artists always sell much better than live <laughs> ones. So we held my funeral at my art opening, and it was a grand old time. And we had a horse show up. <laughs> which uh -huh. was, he was uninvited, but he came yeah. anyway. Yeah. And there's a real fun, a fun picture of you uh, with a horse. Of yes, course. do we have that anywhere? Yeah, yeah. we will we'll <laughs> we'll make show. sure to yeah. s we'll slip it in there. But yeah. yeah. So um, I know that we do have to wrap the show up, but I want to once again remind people where we can uh, visit you, uh, connect with you, of course, um, on Salem Gas Works, either on our Facebook page or on our website. There will be uh, links to this show. Um, but also you can connect with us uh, to reach either Aaron or, or Denny. And there are other options. We can find you on AaronBrown.com mm -hmm. and DennyTintindo.com. Yep. So we better spell that. T-E-N-T-I-N-D-O. DennyTintindo.com. And if you can't spell, you can always send a carrier pigeon. Sure. Yeah. We accept <laughs> okay. us. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for joining thank us today. You. Thank and you. And thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next time on Gasworks.